There are claims from the Labour Party that cancer patients are waiting up to six months to see a cancer doctor after urgent referrals by their GP. The analysis says some patients wait up to nine months for tests and scans and longer for a diagnosis while some treatment can take over a year. And I've been in that situation. Lots of us have had family relatives who, who have had to wait such a long time, so we know how that feels. Uh, we're joined now by Labour MP Liz Kendall from, from Westminster. Uh, Liz Kendall, thanks for joining us this morning. We've Pleasure. all known this for a while, to be fair. I think anybody who's got uh, a, a, a family relative who's had cancer or uh, there's been a cancer scare knows how long it is to wait for an appointment. But what are the figures now? And has it got steadily worse? I'm afraid it has, yes, that cancer waits have got worse every year over the last 13 years. And we are now in a situation where, in the last year alone, half a million people waited more than the required or the target of two weeks between your GP referring you and seeing a cancer specialist. And the target for you to start your treatment from the time you're referred by the GP within two months has not been hit since December 2015. So this is actually a problem that's been happening long before uh, the COVID pandemic. You'll know how frightening it is to wait for a diagnosis and how frightening it is to wait for your treatment to start. And it doesn't have to be like that. We can get those weights down. And that is why Labour is proposing the biggest expansion in the history of the NHS workforce, doubling the number of medical school places, uh, having 10,000 more uh, uh, nursing places each, each year. And that is so important because mm. you cannot get this treatment sorted unless you've got the staff in place. One of the things that uh, always is a red flag in my mind that is obviously, you know, speedy diagnosis, speedy treatment is literally a matter of life or death when you're dealing with cancer. And as you say, terrifying for the individuals involved who have to wait knowing every day might be risking their lives. Mm -hmm. But actually, there are very clear pathways laid down relating to cancer. What is frightening, and probably why you have those statistics, is that there are so many other conditions for whom there aren't clear pathways and targets that are waiting even longer, that can be just as jeopardous, not to take anything away from waiting for a cancer treatment. And I think that's the problem with the scale of the crisis, isn't it? And when you talk about more medical places, wonderful. When you talk about more staff, amazing. However, we're talking about vast and billions of pounds worth of changes that need to be made, aren't we? But I think there are changes that we could and should be making now. You'll know, Kate, that one in seven hospital beds has an elderly person in it who doesn't actually need to be there if they could get the help they need in the community and at home. The government had a much heralded delayed discharges programme. We've got the evidence now, the latest evidence of that, and it shows there's only a couple of hundred fewer people in hospital now than when they first announced the money But you're back talking about, and of course, your shadow for, for social care mm. in particular, you're talking about social care, which is beyond in crisis. I mean, it's just fallen apart but that's and you're not we're not just talking about sorry. elderly people are we so just one second we're talking about adults we're talking about younger people who are stuck in beds because they can't get the support out in the community so that's even more money i i, I mean i no, want if, what I, we're all I, I, want you to be right it's I just the point how to I was do making, it making kate was if you've spent 750 million pounds mm. and you've only got a couple of hundred people out of hospital you've got the wrong program i know yeah. from my own city they said to me we don't need to buy care home beds we need carers in people's own homes yeah. we need the district nurses no Loki. it's been a complete failure of a program mm. so I think that there there is action we could take now to free up those beds so that you can get people starting that treatment as well as the longer term plan we need for the NHS workforce and I would also say this you've probably experienced this too so many people can't even get to see the GP to mm. get the diagnosis in the first place, you, you're on the phone from eight o'clock, you can't get through, you're only seen if it's an emergency, but you can't get the appointment. And for those GP surgeries that do have an ability to book ahead, I've seen this in my own GP surgery, not a single appointment for a whole month. Mm. Yeah.
available. So what do people do? They turn up at A&E. I, I think what all of this shows is, and I understand your viewers will think, this is such a mess, how are we ever going to sort it out? Mm. But I do remember in 1997, very similar situation. People having their operations cancelled, waits for vital heart treatment. And you know what? Labour did end waiting okay. in the NHS. We brought that down just, and we will do that again. Just, just uh, on how you're going to afford this, you've said that uh, you're going to abolish the non-DOM scheme, which... Uh, the uh, economists say that will bring about three billion a year, and also you're going to look at uh, the windfall tax. But is that going to be enough money? I mean, you're looking at extra doctors and nurses. You need to settle the strike dispute. I mean, how much uh, can, can you really take from the non-dom three billion pounds, and also from the windfall tax? I mean, is, is that going to be enough money to, for your plans, or are we all going to be taxed um, higher when, the, no. if and when the Labour government come in? No because we don't want to see taxes rise on ordinary people. What we do think is fair, that is, if you come and live and work in this country, you should be paying your taxes in this country. And the programme has been properly costed because we don't want to let people down. We don't want to make promises we can't keep. I don't want to promise a cancer patient now that we're going to transform the service without showing exactly how we're going to pay for it. And I think, you know, okay. politics is about priorities. And I think that sorting out the NHS workforce, having a long-term plan, funded by abolishing the non-DOM tax status, is the right priority, and I think many of the uh, of the public and your viewers will think that's a, uh, the right priority too. OK, Liz Kendall, thanks for joining us this morning. Liz Kendall, Shadow Minister for the Labour Party mm -hmm. uh, in charge of social care. Um, I mean, do you think she's... Is she right? Can she? Can, can they make this? I mean, should they saying they've done the costings, Jenny? I mean, who knows whether they've done the costings? Well, it, it is I a mean, line... It sounds that, lovely. It is a line that they repeat, isn't it? Uh, whenever you have a, a, a spokesperson from the Labour Party on, on, on any programme, they always say this is a properly costed system, but we, we haven't seen their costings. We're going to have to uh, take their word for it. But the, it's, a, it's a massive, massive challenge. We have... Mm. The NHS has been underfunded for years. There is the whole issue of, of the strike still to deal with, with, in, with mm -hmm. inflation so high, you know, that's that's going to continue being a problem. So, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a massive task and it's all very well saying we've done the costings. We need to see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. And to be fair, they probably need to see the detail as well in government to do that.